everybody, good evening on this Halloween evening here and welcome to Reprieve Media CIC Double Handful with myself Paul Newman and what we've got for you coming up today is we've managed to press gang another presenter into making their radio debut here on Reprieve Media CIC. All being well on the line now, we should have all the way from the good old US of A, Miss Monica McCarthy. Monica, are you there? Hello. I'm here. There she is, boys and girls. Monica, that may I just say, take this opportunity to welcome you to Reprieve Media CIC, and it's great to have you. Thank you. I'm, I'm very honored to be here today. I appreciate it. No problem. So if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, please, Monica. Where are you from? Um, I'm from originally Decatur, Illinois, which is in the Midwest of the United States, um, probably about three hours south of Chicago, all in sort of the corn, soybean, flat country, very much into farming and uh, manufacturing in this area. Ah, okay. So, and how, and you're, you're obviously a fan of horse racing, or actually wouldn't be on this show. Uh, how did you how did you get into horse racing? Um, I lived in southern Indiana, which is um, probably about five hours from here. And there was a, a racetrack there in Kentucky, just across the Ohio River. And it's called Ellis Park. And I started going with a friend and just fell in love with horse racing. Um, not so much the handicapping side of it, but just seeing the horses race live, going to the paddock, going back to the, the barns, and just the whole thing. I just love horses. So I, uh, as a child, um, there was another racetrack there in Henderson um, that was a sulky racing, harness racing. I went there as a child with my parents and their friends, and um, I had a childhood friend that had ponies that we would ride, and I had some of my cousins out in Colorado, they had paint horses that we would ride, but other than that, I guess it would be Ells Park really got to me, and I got the I caught the bug for horse racing and thoroughbreds at Ells Park in Henderson, Kentucky. Okay, so when you say Ellis Park, I must say that's a racetrack I'm not really familiar with. Do they have do they have many big races there, or is it just a provincial track? Um, it is. Um, they have flat racing there. Um, they have a short meet from the Fourth of July to Labor Day, which would be July Fourth through the first uh, Monday of September. So they have kind of a short meet. Uh, the state of Kentucky is set up to where you will never have a track overlapping another track's racing meets. So, um, like, for instance, like Keeneland in Lexington, they uh, ended their fall meet on um, Saturday, this last Saturday, and then uh, Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky, Started theirs the very next day on Sunday over the weekend. And then, of course, you know, we have the Breeders' Cup races coming up, you know, this weekend, Friday and Saturday. And so they're, the tracks in Kentucky are all set up that way where they never overlap. So, oh, that's yeah. fantastic. So, obviously, you touched on the Breeders' Cup there. I mean, before we, before we start looking at the Breeders' Cup, because that's why we're here today, What's uh -huh. your what's your overwhelming memory of horse racing? What's your what was the first horse that you remember watching as as a child that got you first into racing? Um, I don't really as a child I don't really remember a particular horse. I would have to say as a child it'd be Seattle Slough, a Triple Crown winner in like seventy seven, I believe. Okay, so what's your first? So as you were as you were sort of growing up, and that's when people really develop their love for these things. What was what was the horse that captures your imagination? Um, it have to be Secretariat. 
Yeah, because obviously being being around at that time, did you did you honestly think at the time that you had you had seen the best racehorse you were ever going to see at the time? Yeah, uh, that that Belmont race. I mean, wow. You know, you know, Secretary had a, a lar- had that gene to have have a large heart. So stamina, stamina, stamina. Yeah, good horse, weren't he? I I couldn't um every time I, I watch the rewatch the Belmont race when Secretariat won the Triple Crown, I'm still blown away. I mean it's just or or maybe Ruffian, the Philly Ruffian. That's another one um that, you know, came to a bad end. Uh, but that's back when they still did those challenge races where there'd be two horses racing just each other and that's it. I think that kind of ended that challenge, two horses just competing. I think that kind of ended, but that's kind of how the horse racing got started in Kentucky, in America. We used to have the odd race like that. We're allowed to get two or three or four entries. It's just the way it goes sometimes. But I noticed that that very rarely happens in America. I mean, the most, the fewest runners I saw was, was a race the other day where there was only five or six runners in. But, but they tend right. to be on the turf, don't they? Um, Ruffian's race was on the, the dirt. Um, but it seems I'm, like I'm not familiar with that horse, to be honest. Was, was that was that a good filly? Was it? Philly, yeah, she's a filly. Okay, so let's uh, let's bring it back to the modern day now. And I, I know I know from reading your social media uh, channels that there is one there is there is one particular uh, female horse at the moment that has uh, captured your attention over. In Australia, would I be? Would that be fair to say? Oh yes, that would be definitely fair to say. That would have to be that Winx Supergirl. Yeah, I mean, she is. I think that's twenty nine now. Group one wins in succession for the horse, isn't it? Yes. Who does that? Nobody. Well, Frankel won. Frankel won for fourteen races out of fourteen, but they weren't. They weren't all Group ones. But obviously, Winx had raced raced about seven or eight times before she had this run so she, she wasn't she's not unbeaten she she's uh but but her form over the last four or five years in, in australia is, is is a totally different grade to them i mean what what is it about her what what do you think marks her out as something special from all the others um i think for one thing with winks she is a total professional you know i know that they put the hood the Batman hoodie, I don't know what they call it over there, you know, on her, you know, to keep the the sound down or the earplugs they used with horses. But she is just a total professional. She she knows when she's there, she's just focused on the race. She you know, and all these people are screaming and hollering around her and she acts like she didn't miss a beat. She's just totally focused. I mean she's actually now ta- she is now actually taking on what I would consider no disrespect to the Australian scene, but if you look at if you look at the horses uh, she was beating uh, before, say, but they were they were they were a lot of them were actually imported from England, so so it's fair to say that uh, it should be easy to us easier to assess their merits. For instance, Ventura Storm was is all was one that always popped up, and that was a that was a Group One winner in Italy. Uh, but it, it wasn't well, Richard Hannan used to train it in England. But over in the last uh, year or so, she really has other other. I think I think the European trainers have been uh, have been very sporting, haven't they? Be, be, because it became pretty pretty clear on that Winks wasn't going anywhere, was she? No, she was not going anywhere. And if they wanted to race against her, they would have to go to her. Exactly, and and that's and that's entirely up to them. It's it's their horse. They can. They can com- campaign and campaign and manage their horse as much as they like, but there, there will be people out there that say Winx will only be a true racing great if she uh, races outside of Australia. But but you've just touched on a horse there, Secretariat. He never raced outside of America, did he? Did he? Does that make him no good? Yes, he did. Actually, he did. They did run him Ontario, Canada on turf. So he had he could add Wood that buys, well, it doesn't count. I class that as American racing. Come on, I class that as American racing. Wood buying, I really do. <laughs> oh, all right, then let, I'll change that then. Outside of North America, then, yeah. Right, exactly. No, 
You, you, you didn't see Secretariat go and race in the English King George or race in the Ark to, to prove that he was any good, yeah. did you? So I do think a lot of that is unfair, saying, oh, Winks needs to try, especially with her being a mayor as well. Right. But right. I, I will say I will say one thing that I do think the hype around her is a bit much, considering what she's beaten. When you look at when you look at other mayors like Ouija Board, I don't know if you're familiar with a mayor called Ouija Board. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was an English-trained mayor, trained by Ed Dunlop, and that one, that one races in probably four or five continents. It won Breeders' Cup, it won one in Hong Kong, one in Ireland, one in England. You know, it, it, that's a proper horse. It's also the Dam of Australia that won the, that won the, that won the English Derby. You know, right. pe- people forget that Wink, this is only half of Winx's racing, racing career. You know, she's, she still has to show that she can do it in the paddock. Right, right. Um, I don't know. I think that I think one of the things with Wink is her numbers of nine consecutive race wins and what is it, up to what twenty two or twenty three grade one races. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible achievement, isn't it? That's a big achievement. I, I mean, in my day, I don't know of a horse that's done that. Well, no, not not to that extent at that such a high level for such a long period of time. That's. That's one thing that you have to do come compliment the horse on is the constitution of the horse. Yeah. Because because that has taken some serious racing. I mean, it's bit raced not so long ago, and it was out again on Saturday, and and, and won arguably its toughest race, the Cox Plate. That horse can take take some racing, can't it? Yeah. I mean, four Cox Plates. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is that is a fantastic achievement over in Australia, without any shadow of a doubt. I mean, but that. With Affiliate, what Affiliate's Affili is always going to get be, be hard to beat in them races because because of the weight allowance, you know. But it, it does make a difference. But without without any shadow of a doubt, Winx is a top class man. Oh yeah. But it'll be interesting oh, yeah. to see what what connections do with her regarding breeding. I mean, I understand they're going to keep her in Australia for a breeding career as well, and only breed her to Australian sires. I don't know if you've heard anything about that. Right. Well, um, American Pharaoh went to australia in our in north american winter and so did one of my favorite current stallions is frosted i love the frosted frosty so there are horses and then um, california chrome went to um, argentina for his winter which is spring there i don't know it's yeah, it's happening quite a lot. It's happening quite a lot, as you know. You've, you've said to me you follow Coolmore Stallions. Right. And uh, a lot of them have done it as well this year, haven't they? Caravaggio has gone to Australia, hasn't he? Uh, well, the other one's gone to Australia as well, Churchill. Yes. So it, it's becoming more and more common, isn't it? But don't forget Wings can only give birth to... Don't forget Wings can only give birth to one foal a year. Right. It's not like, it's not like they can... They can uh, take all these sires out to Australia. They can have 200 and sell them all. Winks is only having one. So it's going to be a long way to say, go to go to Newmarket to say if they wanted to give her Dubawi or something. Right. Or any other sire right. like that. It's going to be a long way for yes. her to go, isn't it's it? It's going to be a long process. Exactly. So let's let's obviously say that... Um, we, we, do, you, do you think that was her last race then at the weekend? Or do you think she'll race again after that? I think that might have been her last race. No, I don't know exactly what the owners, you know, there's several of them, you know, it's a syndicate, so uh, I don't know what their thoughts are, but that's what the media are, are saying, you know, the Australian media, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same as you, I think now, after 29 Group 1 races, I mean, it is getting to the stage now where they have to really, if there's nothing there left for her to do out there, is there? They have to really now, if they're going to start racing, start campaigning to somewhere else, I think. And and they're not really going down that road, which is fair enough to them. So I feel now that she's got nothing else to prove in Australia. Right, right. So, so it'll be interesting to see who they breed her with. Right, why we're here today, Monica, it's the Breeders' Cup this weekend. And it's fair to say, really, but for those who are unfamiliar with the American racing scene here in Europe, because a lot of our listeners are, in fact, European Let's uh, just tell us a bit about how important the Breeders' Cup is to the American racing calendar. Okay. Uh, the, the Breeders' Cup to the American racing is like 
the Super Bowl in American football. It's the best of the best comes to compete. Um, they have a different format this year. On Friday, they will have all two-year-old racing to the juveniles. And those juveniles, two-year-olds, will turn three years old come January 1st. So it's it's kind of like a good indication of how what type of stock of three-year-olds we're going to have for the first Saturday in May, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, the second jewel of the crown for American crown, and then the third at Belmont Park. Yeah, I mean, well, you, well, you say that. But, but last year's Kentucky Derby, this year's Kentucky Derby winner, Triple Crown would have never raced at two, did it? So American racing could be changing. American racing could be changing. You all need to be careful this year because a lot of these, I've, I've looked at these juveniles and I don't think a lot of them are that good on, on breeding. Not the ones that I've looked at anyway. So I'm, I'm thinking this year that if these, are the, if these are next year's Kentucky Derby crop, I'll be amazed. They won't, they'll have to improve no end of, or it'll be a bad race. And what I've seen so far. I mean, you're, you're going to touch on the turf race, I think, aren't you? The juvenile turf? Yes. I mean, what, what are your views on that race then? Um, I'm not like you. I've been so focused on the Breeders' Cup and not on the, the juveniles this year. Usually I'm, I'm more up on the juveniles, the two-year-olds, but not, I don't, have any much um thoughts on the race for friday that middleson won last year yeah i mean that's that's the strange thing about this race i mean i've i've looked at the road to the kentucky derby really i'm, I'm a believer that if you're going to do something you're going to do something properly right. watch it from the start to the end so i noticed right. that mendelssohn won this race last year i cannot believe that there's no kentucky derby points for it no i mean i think there should be We've uh, we've looked at a few European races already, and they've they've been run on the turf, and they've got points for that. So I, I can't see why this race here hasn't got any Kentucky Derby points at stake, even if it's only ten. I mean, I had a I had a little glance at it. To be honest, I'm not familiar with hardly any of them because a lot of them are American horses, and I don't really look at many American juveniles. Only with a view, I've looked at four American juvenile races. And I don't think any of them are running in this race. So that's where I am with it at the minute. You've got, you've got what's it called down the bottom, the, the Coolmore yes. horse, Anthony Van Dyke, haven't you? I mean, my view is that that, that would bring a high level of form to the, to, to the race. It, it looks like, it's looked like one of the, one of the top five mm -hmm. European two-year-olds easily. They've got, it's only, it got beat by Corto, the Godolphin horse, uh, uh, in, in Ireland. But, I think I think the American horses will have to be quite good to beat that one. You know, I don't really know. Right. I don't really know whether any of them are. Right. Because I, like I said, I've not looked at the race. I see Godolphin have got right. one out there as well, mm -hmm. Line of mm -hmm. Duty. But uh, I didn't really look at that one. I didn't. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Charlie Appleby and William Buick. But for me, I think it's a race. It's a race really that is very difficult to predict what's going to happen. Um. When I look at uh, juvenile races, all two-year-old races, whether you know they're they're going to be on Friday or whenever, I first look at their pedigrees and see where they're you know how they've been bred. Um, I you know number five line of duty. He his morning line odds are ten to one. Um, that's where they see um, him fit at right now but like i said you know come tomorrow and it the odds will go all over the place it's out of jacqueline quest it's a i remember that one so i think i think it has got an obvious chance but normally in a race like this i'd expect the quality to be a lot better you know i don't really none of the american horses jump out of me jump out off the page at me at all it's a it's a funny race. It doesn't seem to be anything that's. It doesn't seem to be anything that's mm -hmm. any confidence behind it at all in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I'm looking at what I'm looking at at the minute is Anthony Van Dyke is the favourite at four to one. So the Americans aren't really thinking that they've got anything for this race. Yeah. That's what I would gather by the market. 
You know, it's tricky race, to, tricky race to predict. I think, I think there's easier races than that this weekend. That's for certain. The only one I'm seeing in the uh, juvenile turf right now, as far as uh, I'm liking, um, is number seven. Some like it hot brown. I'm liking him. He's at twelve to one right now. So okay. Um. I don't know anything about the horse. You got a big me. brown. I can tell that right now. Big brown is his name. Good luck to you. If, if that's the if that's the one you fancy, if that's the one, if that's the one you if that's the one you like for this race, then that's the one you like. But me personally, I could never, I could never have any confidence behind any of these. Right. They're not. None of them have been on my radar this far. So so right, I tend right. to I tend to leave races alone like that. It's early in the season. Right, like right. I said, I've only the only four juvenile races I've seen this year in America, are the, mm-hmm. the the early Kentucky Derby trials. I mean, the race... Definitely. I mean, what's, what's your view on the uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile? I mean, this is a race... Right. This is a race that Good Magic won last year. And Good Magic, right. obviously, proved to be one of the uh, top-notch Triple Crown horses, didn't he? So so I feel that that's probably, that's probably a better race I than, can see than that. the turf. Would you agree with that? Because there's no, there's no points for the Kentucky Derby either. So if you've got a juvenile that you're gonna, that you want to run in the Kentucky Derby, you might as well try and get some points in the right. juvenile as opposed to running in the turf, might you? I'm getting none. So that's what that's what I figured there. I mean, I've had a, I've had a look at a few of them, to be honest. And two tomorrow that I feel a lot of the ones I was looking at were the. Uh, with the European winners so far, because I thought they were, they were a lot better bred than the. Uh, with a view, this is all with a view to the Kentucky Derby. I mean, you've got the two running tomorrow. You've got a bab, the Bob Baffert horse, game winner. That was that won the, that won the, that won the inaugural running of a race called the American Pharaoh in America. So, so obviously you'd think that maybe Bob Baffert would have one of his best horses in that race. Um, it's done nothing wrong. Really, what it and, and, and I know that that's the favourite tomorrow at around yeah. uh, eight or nine to five. Uh, the main, the main, the main competition to me probably looks around to be complexity. That's the uh, okay. Chad Brown trained runner. I mean, that's again, it, it won quite well last time out. But to me, I think that a lot of them. I was disappointed that the European races, the European runners that hadn't. That had already picked up some points in the road to the Kentucky Derby, like Royal Marine, who won the uh, John Luke Lagardere. I mean, I was hoping that would run because that was actually a well-bred horse. Mm-hmm. And so too is Japan, the Coolmore horse Japan, that won the, the Beresford Stakes. I mean, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe right. they're not beat Kentucky Derby horses after all that next year. But they, they ran in. They ran in. They ran in races where they scored points in Europe, you see, for winning the Kentucky Derby. So we won't, I can't rule them out yet because there's plenty of races at three. They could, if one of them turned up and won that race, Mendelssohn won in Dubai, that would probably get him a run, you know, in the Kentucky Derby, I think. So there are a couple of horses I spotted, Royal Marine and Japan. But at the minute, everyone is looking at the Milers, the juvenile for, for the Guineas next year. So that's, that's why Anthony Van Dyke right. horses like that have not really... Looked at too much, and you're and, and you're probably the same. You've not really looked at as many juveniles this year yet, no. No, no, I haven't. Like I said, um, usually I always uh, pull up Churchill Downs has you know their own website, and they have they'll start keeping the points. You know, now that you said a couple of the the Euros European horses have gained points, so there, there's a list now of how many points everybody has and who's contenders, you know, the contenders. And, you know, um, also with two-year-olds, too, you got to realize that um, not every horse that's two is born on the same day. You might have had had a horse that was born January 1st or, Janu- let's just say, January 15th, and then you had a, another two-year-old that was born November. So there's a big gap between january to november as far as their um development so you're gonna have to throw that in the mix a little bit too and consider that um not every horse develops at the same rate you know some of them take growth spurts and and whatnot just like humans so that's another factor with the two-year-olds is it's kind of 
two-year-olds are kind of iffy. You know, it takes them a couple times maybe to, even to figure out, you know, what they're doing out on the track. Okay, oh, we're, we're you know, running a race. Okay, and how they school the gates and, and, and that sort of thing. So two-year-olds are kind of tough to look at sometimes just in general, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it makes 100% sense. I agree with you. You know, I don't really like to... I look at races, two-year-old races, over seven furlongs and above. I don't really... I don't really look at the six furlong races and below because, like you said, uh, you know, I'm looking at horses that can, that have got some sort of longevity. You know, I don't necessarily think that juveniles running over six furlongs every other week is the best, the best way to race to train a horse long term. But these races are worth a lot of money, and some people have to win them. So I can see why it happens. But mm -hmm. I do think that I do think that Royal Marine. I mean, if he turns up in some of these Kentucky Derby trials, that is a horse, the Godolphin horse, Royal Marine, that won the. Uh, John Luke Lagardere. I mean, I looked at the I looked at the breeding of it, and it's a uh, the dam is a sister to, to two sires, Dubai Destination and Libertist. Two two good horses in, in Europe. Two sires, you know. So that horse is good. But there's a horse that, that's won two out of three, only aged four, called uh, Crystal River, including a listed race last time out. It hasn't raced this year, and that's a that's a, a full sister to Royal Marine as well. So there's. There's a clear, few clues there that that could be a good horse. And the same with Japan. I mean, I looked at that. That is a quality horse as well. The one that, that Coolmore won mm -hmm. the uh, Beresford Stakes with. I mean, that one, that's related to the Oaks runner-up, Secret Gesture. That's placed five times at Group 1 level. Never won one. But one, one that's an unlucky horse. Good horse it was. Good, solid, stout horse. But um, the, the dam is also related to plenty of sires as well. Sagamix that won the Ark. Uh, sagacity that won a few French races. It's also it's also produced the dam of a sire as well that herself won a Group Two level called uh, Sag Sage Jolie, and that's the dam of Sagerberg, a good national hunt sire that we have over here. The stay was all day long that horse will. You know, that that is a stayer horse. So that that could be a very good horse as well for maybe something next year as well. But regarding the two. Regarding the two that have actually turned up, if, if, if either of them win tomorrow, they will have 30 points for the road to the Kentucky Derby game winner or complexity. So, I don't know. It's a tough race. It's a tough race. My advice would be probably just to watch it and right. Uh, right. see what happens. You know, there's not, many, there's not many European horses in there that I think could worry them two horses. There's a, there's a couple that have gone over, but not, not the ones I'd have, I'd have liked to have seen. You know, it's a tricky race. So, I think now, really, like you've said, you've touched on your thoughts on the juvenile. There is the Marathon Stakes, which I'm not sure is an actual official Breeders' Cup race or not. It's at Churchill Downs, but it ain't got, it ain't got Marathon, it ain't got Breeders' Cup in front of it. So, we'll, we'll gloss over that. And we'll, we'll, we'll get on to the main, main event now on Saturday, yeah? Yeah. So we're gonna get we're gonna get on to the main event now, the Saturday. Where really it has to be said, Monica, the uh, racing is top class, isn't it? Oh, most definitely top class. We've got a uh, tons and tons of talent in the field. Where do you want to start? Uh, you you pick. I'm more than happy to let you go first. I mean, what race do you want to look at? Okay, let's start out with the Long Jeans Turf. Fair enough. I mean, what are your views then? What's going to win that? Okay, that is a mile and a half distance on the turf. Proper race. It's a grade one. It's a $4 million purse. Kitching. Um, gee whiz, there is so much talent Absolutely. here. We got what Talismatic, Enable, got Channel Maker, Robert Bruce, Magical Glow, Glorious Empire. And um, Liam the Charmer, uh, Quarteto Cordes. I mean, I, I, I gave, I got, I've had a good look at a few of these, obviously, because they're all top class horses. I mean, we have to start really with Enable. I mean, that won the Ark. Enable won the Ark. I mean, do you think? What's the, what's the Americans' opinion of Enable? Do they know? I don't think the Americans really know how good she is, do they? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love her. Have they been watching? Have they been watching the races though from last year? Do they know? Do they know what they're going to see tomorrow? Potentially. Well, yeah, I think they do. Maybe because 
the morning line odds on enable is one to one. So somebody's like in a race like this, you'd think bloody hell, that must be a serious horse straight away, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd say that, wouldn't you? And it is. It is. Winner of the arc. I mean, you were looking there. You mentioned one there from talking about talismanic. Yes. I mean, what are your views on that one? Um. I don't like Talismatic's post pick as uh, number one. Sometimes number one, mm, they get stuck in that, you know, they can run into traffic in the number one post. That's that's what I'm worried about Talismatic on. Um, they can get stuck and get into traffic and get bogged down and, and hopefully get, you know, not all the time, but sometimes the post one is a bad, not a not a ideal post to be in. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad you told me that because because I, I'm glad I'm glad you told me that because I, I actually do think that he won the race last year as well. Right. But <coughs> right. I looked at this year's race compared to last year's race, and I don't think they compare. I, th I think last year's race was a lot easier than this. Mm -hmm. This this is a proper race. I'm not saying the race it won last year wasn't a proper race. It was, but this year's is a is a deep race. Oh, it is deep, deep. I think deep. the horse. Is, I think the horse. I think the horse is thriving. You know, I think. It, it won in France the first time out, and, and, and it was entitled to at the weights. It really was. It, the, race, the race conditions were, were so in its favour that if it didn't win, they really would have had to not retire it. But it had been, been a blow for them. But it won. It won as it as was entitled to. It ran well. And then it, were, it was put firmly in its place, though, by... If you, if you look down the bottom, you've got horse number 12. Mm-hmm. Waldgeist. Waldgeist. Waldgeist, yeah. I mean that that, that 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 absolutely trotted all over Talismanic last time out. Yeah, absolutely trotted all over it in the Ark trial. In the Ark trial. Yeah, I saw. So that. you've got to really be looking. I think the Europeans' form in this race is very strong. With yeah. Talismanic, Enable, yeah. Waldgeist, and you've got Magical in there as well, which, which is which is she's coming back to her best a bit now. Very very good juvenile, but not really. You could not write that horse out of, of any race, I don't think. I mean, what, what are your views on a... Well, then you've got Hunting Horn down the bottom as well, my old mate Hunting Horn. I mean, me personally, I think this race is, is a bit too much for him at this stage of his really? career. You know, I'm looking for him to... Yeah, I'm looking for him to train on next year and be a, be a better horse next year. But he's a good horse. He's right, yeah. But, you know, he's the sort of horse that could easily surprise a few in this race. If you look at his form in Belmont... He, he was quite good. He, he was mm -hmm. third first when he ran there first mm -hmm. time. And then the second time, it didn't really happen to right. him. But, yeah. What, what, what are your views on the other American horses? What about Robert Bruce? Have you got any views um, on that? I like Robert Bruce. Um, yeah, so do I. I mean, these Chilean horses, they're lethal, aren't they? Yes, they are. You, they do win, yes, don't they? Yes, they, they? they are. Absolutely lethal, yes, aren't they? they are. Um. His morning line is ten to one. He's got a good trainer. I I liked him last time. Last two races I saw him race, I was impressed with. Um, I also yeah it won the Arlington I Million, didn't it? It won the Arlington yes, Million. Yes. Also ran ran at Arlington as number six, Arklo. Um. Oh, did that run? Did that run at Arlington yes, as well? Did it? He won. He ran at Arlington and he won last time out. Arklo did. Um, I like Arklo. Um, I'd like to win on Arklo. He's in morning lines third one. Um, <laughs> he um, has got a good. I like the trainer. And I like for, for. You think that's a big price, do you? You think if you, you think thirty to one on Arklo is a big yeah, price? Yeah. I like Arklo. Fair enough. Let's see. I, well, we will we'll look for that. I mean, me personally, I I learned to my cost last year, last race, and the. Uh, Woodbine race, the Canadian International, not even mm -hmm. to look at them. They're, I think they're just essentially guessing, judging on the, my race. But I, so I've just really gone on the form. But yeah, I mean, I didn't really look. To me, I will, I will say this, you will probably not like this as an American, but I will never back an American trained horse over a mile and a half. I don't think they want the mm -hmm. trip. I don't think, I don't think there's any race, I don't think there's any races for it over there a mile mm -hmm. and a half. They go a mile and a half in the Belmont in, under duress. I think they don't, they'd rather not go a mile and a half. So I do not, I would not, I mean, I'll be looking at the prices. I think it sort of reflects what I'm saying right. as well. And the prices I'm looking at are Ladbrook. Right. The Channel Maker must have an obvious yes, chance. Yes, he's at 12. Number three. Yeah. But he got a good job. 
Yeah, I, I noticed that he's a girl. I noticed straight away, though, that he, that he was a gelding. Mm. No, so, yeah, I'm not really a fan of these geldings in Group 1 races. The whole point of these, the whole point of the pattern is to, uh, for breeding. Right. The whole right. point of it. Sometimes. So, I don't see why horses right. that can't breed should be in it. Sometimes. Geldings really shouldn't be allowed in it. Sometimes. We're only there to make the numbers up. Sorry. Sometimes, um, they have to geld them. You know, they're, they're just too high strong and they're too mean. And gelding's only thing. Yeah, but they shouldn't be able to run. They shouldn't. They shouldn't be able to run in pattern races. They should. They should run in their own races, gelding's races. I'm not familiar. No, there isn't any, is there? But what I'm saying is, these races group. The whole point of the group pattern is to help breed it. So if you've got horses that can't breed running in them, it's just sort of defeating the object of it, isn't it? And that's my view. I've always thought it. I, I personally hate gelding's winning group one races. Always have done. Hate it. That's just me. That's just me. The way it is. So, so in you in this what Yeah, well, yeah, go on then. I'm not saying that I don't like geldings. I'm just saying that in, in flat group races, I don't think they're necessarily what the pattern wants. The pattern should turn up winners like that. The system is not designed for a gelding to win it because it's a breeding pattern. But that's obvious. I'm not saying that no geldings are good horses. Some of my best. Some of the horses I've won most on are geldings because you can rely on a gelding more than a colt. Right. Right. Yeah, they're like you said. They are a lot less temperamental. They are more than likely able to give up. They're more honest running as well. I'm not saying that get rid of geldings. All I'm saying is that in Group One races, like the Ark, geldings aren't allowed to run in the Ark, and I, and I think I think they've got it wrong. Right. Gotcha. No, they don't have it. They don't have it in the English Derby. In the Guineas, geldings aren't allowed to run in the arc either, and I think they've got it right as well. There, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying they shouldn't be able to run. Yeah. I'm not saying they shouldn't run them. Yeah. So what about what about? I know it's another one down there, another famous American trainer. Todd Pletcher's got one called High Happy, an Argentinian bred one. I mean, do you know anything about that one? Um, uh, not not real schooled in High Happy, Argentina. Um. They they tend to do well those southern horses you know South American horses uh, you got to watch out for them the odds oh yeah we've actually shut them twenty to one they're not liking them yet but uh, what about Sadler's Joy yeah that, that horse has been about years isn't it wasn't that a good three year old I remember that vaguely but there's so many Sadlers racing in America I might be on about a different <laughs> horse I do remember that one yeah. vaguely <laughs> five years old now is he getting any better yeah you know I'll be looking at I, don't know. I think in this race that it's a tricky race. I wouldn't like to predict the winner. Yeah, it, it is. Enables had a very yeah, uh, enables had a very light campaign. It must have had a hard race in the arc. It must have had. You know, the arc is a hard race, and uh, this is quite soon after the arc. I'm not. You know, it's a tough race. I was impressed with Robert Bruce when it won the Arlington Million. I thought it stuck mm -hmm. on well, and and, 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 it, and it won no end of Group Ones in Chile as mm -hmm. well. And then you got Matt. And then you got Magical as well. Tough race. Tough like Wallgeist. You know, I was a bit disappointed with the run of Wallgeist in the arc, though. I was fancying him in the arc. He didn't really impress mm -hmm. me that one much in the arc. But if he hadn't run in, if he if he hadn't run in the arc and just gone straight here, I would have been saying that Wallgeist was 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 a, a, mm -hmm. a fantastic horse. Mm -hmm. and he, he, he is. But he, he's had a long season. You know, it's a tough race. I mean. Yeah, I can't wait to watch it. That's for certain. I, I think you can. I think you can make. I think you can make a case for a few of them, without any shadow of a doubt. So, what's the, what's the next race? You're, okay, you're next race up, we're going to cover the mile turf mile.
the next race we're going to look at, I can't wait for this race because there's horse in here that I, I do really rate. Uh, whether it's going to win that is another question because this is a proper race as well, isn't it? I mean, we're yeah. talking, of course, about the Breeders' Cup Turf Mile. Again, I mean, you Americans are really spoiled with the sportingness of the European trainers because I honestly do feel that if it wasn't for the European trainers here, this would be a very average race, to say the least, with the American horses. I mean, analyse it. A good horse, that's been unlucky. That's been very unlucky. Come second to last twice. You know, but that, that could easily run well, the American trained horse. And Alman, are you spotted that one, the uh, Hamdan horse? The six year old gelded. You can obviously tell what I think about that after after listening to me earlier, you see. That's why I didn't fancy it last time, because it's gelded. It does. But yeah, it could run a great race. It ran well last time out. You've got. You've got another one in there that I know nothing about whatsoever called uh, Next Shares. And Oscar Performance, who I actually looked at at, at, at Arlington earlier in the season. And I thought that was quite a disappointing run last time out. So I've sort of gone off that one. But that, that was an American horse that I was looking at. What do you think of the American Challenge in that race? Uh, yes, Oscar Performance. Uh, last, last couple of races I've been disappointed in him. And um, before that, um, great horse, you know, yeah, winning. Very good horse. You know, yeah, winning. very good horse. He could easily bounce back to his best tomorrow, though, and just show what a good horse he is. Yes, he? absolutely. But he is going to have to put them last two runs behind him without any shadow of a doubt because they don't put him anywhere near, do they? What do you think of uh, Catapult? I know it's, that's quite a short price. I know nothing about that horse as well. Catapult, Catapult yes. Yes, John Sadler. He's, he's a California. Um, he, he catapults stable in California. John said he's a, he's a good solid horse. I don't know if he's got good enough to be in some of the field with some of these, um, European horses though. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing here because you've got some serious European horses, but a lot of them, I think, which European horse do you, do you like the look of the most then in this well, race? Well, um, in one thing, uh, expert eye. Oh, that is, that is a horse. I mean, I don't know, though. I think, I might be wrong here, that he wants really wants seven furlongs as opposed to a mile. I'm not saying he's a good horse, not a good horse over a mile. If you look at his form over seven furlongs, there's a juvenile. He won the, uh, the Champagne Stakes, uh, which is a, a, good, a good race at Glorious Goodwood. And I don't know if you've ever seen that race. I'll send it to you later if you haven't. But if you see that, if you see him racing that race, you would think that is the best, one of the best horses ever, because he looked anything on that day. He didn't really train on though, and then and then he bounced back to form in emphatic style at Royal Ascot. Absolutely thrashed him at over seven furlongs again in the Jersey Jersey Stakes. But that's again seven furlongs, back up to a mile. You know, I hope he runs well because I do rate the horse. I mean, the one I think is a big price in there is. I know they're sending it to stud as well, so they've literally got nothing to lose. And it won, it won the, it won the mile race at Goodwood, the Sussex Stakes. Lightning Spear is a big price in that race, I think. That's number fourteen. Down the bottom, number eleven, Qatar Qatar Racing Horse. I mean, it's solid or solid as a rock. I'd be a lot more confident if the race was at Goodwood, <laughs> because because the horse absolutely loves Goodwood, and Goodwood's a bit of a unique track. But I do feel that they've got absolutely nothing to lose. They know they're going to stud with him. He's won, he's won the group one he's been looking for all these years. He's won no end of group twos. And he won finally won his first group one in the Sussex this year. So they've got nothing to lose with the horse at all. You know, Simcock, Simcock won one with, won with Desert Encounter as well in the Canadian International. That horse is a big price at, in, them, in them morning line prices. I think it wouldn't surprise me if that, if that ran well. It wouldn't. Uh, one master as well. I don't know. Did you did you notice that one? What other European horses do you like the look yeah. of in there? Um, I like um, also Almanar. Yeah, that's the Hamdan horse, isn't it? That's the ex French horse. It's got good form. It had good form in France as well and ran well last time out. But it's a gelding, isn't it? I don't want it to win. End of story. But it, I'm not, that's not saying it's not going to. But from a personal point of view, I'd be disappointed if it did. I mean, that's been that's uh, what about. There's another French horse in there, Poly Dream. I mean, that's another one that, that to me could need seven furlongs as well. Very good horse though, very good juvenile. 
look to have bounced back in sprinting though again in France. It's been sprinting. You know, I think they're I think they're stretching its stamina a bit. You know, old Guillon and Freddie Ed though, they know what they're doing there, don't they, the Wertheimers. They have a they have a few winners at the Breeders' Cup, don't they? Yes. Now what about um Aiden O'Brien's two, thirteen and and seven. Seven is a, uh, I can fly. Yeah, it's been running well. It's, it's it's sort of improving late in the season. It didn't look good enough at the start of the season, but it's not doing too bad now. Couldn't rule it out with any confidence. Um, but I think out of O'Brien's two, happily, you would probably be the better horse. But again, that's that's disappointed me this year, happily, without any shadow of a doubt. So it's they'd love it to win. They'd, they'd be happy if it won tomorrow. Number thirteen is the same, Gustav Klimt. You have, yeah. you have to say that they'd be, they'd be delighted if that won tomorrow as well because that's been highly tried this year and they thought a lot of it as a juvenile and it just hasn't fulfilled its potential, I don't think, as a three-year-old. So that's another one that, that they'll, they'll be delighted if that ran well tomorrow. They'll be absolutely delighted if that could get its head in front tomorrow. Yeah, they would. Mustachery as well is, is an interesting horse. I've just noticed that down the bottom, the five-year-old gelding. Yeah. Another Hamdan gelding, just as if there weren't enough in the race <laughs> with old Almanar. <laughs> Uh, oh, and I'm done chucking another geld in, in, in there. That's a good horse. That's, that's been running quite well in England. I think it's one of its last two races. I wouldn't rule that out either. What are your thoughts on Lightning Spear? Lightning Spear is also like in the race, like I said. I mean, at 20 to 1, if them prices are, are, to, be, are to be believed, I have got nothing to lose with it. I think they'll be throwing everything at it because, because it's going to be his last race. They're, they're, they're going to be happy if he finishes anywhere. As long as he gets home safe and sound, they'll be delighted. They've, they've got absolutely nothing to lose with him. Just the sort of horse that, with a shrewd trainer, that could easily run a, run a, run a cracking race. Because he, he is a good horse, a good honest horse in England. But like I said, he, he loves Goodwood. And it's not at Goodwood, it's somewhere else. So, I think uh, one thing you will say about Lightning Spear, I think, above some of the others, is, he, is he's guaranteed to get the trip. A lot of his... A lot of his form is over a mile at least. You know, he's guaranteed to get the trip. Mustachery as well, guaranteed to get the trip as well. He's a 12 furlong horse. Almanar as well, dropping back down in trip. Oscar Performance, you think he'd be guaranteed to get the trip as well, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I would think so. I think maybe he straightened out and hopefully he'll be in the money. Yeah, I mean, I can tell I can tell listening to you that you're probably quite strong on Oscar Performance in this race, isn't you? Yeah. You know, like it's Not chances. 100%, but I, I, I think I see in the money. One Master's an interesting one for me as well. The Philly, it won the foray, the pre-foray at Longchamp. Maybe seven furlongs again, so. But with Haggis, you can't rule him out. You don't have many runners at the Breeders' Cup, really, Haggis. So that in, in, so him sending that there is an absolute tip in itself, really. You have to say that, because that guy does not go anywhere for a day out. If he has sent that horse there because he thinks it can win. No, no question. So that is that is a horse. It's very dangerous to rule out. But you said, you said that you don't want to be stall one in this race as well. Yeah, you count that as well. Stall one is a bit of a bad draw for one master. Yeah. Yes, um, one master and expert on. Yeah. Do you feel so? What, what do you feel? Do you feel that, that there's any horse in there that you'd be feel confident enough about? Um, I those two. Those two, one master and one guy, and I'm, I'm going to uh, work on performance is going to have a good day. Yeah, I know the Americans love old Oscar, don't they? I've, I've been reading a few articles about him. He's a popular horse in America, isn't he? But, but, right. but he's got no form whatsoever, has he, at the minute? So he's, I, think you're back, I think you're backing him yeah, on sentiment, Yeah, a little bit. You? you can't do that. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's nothing wrong in that. There's nothing wrong in that with horse racing. It'd be... There'd be a few tears in America somewhere if that horse came back to its best and won tomorrow, wouldn't there? Because 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 he is a popular horse, isn't he? Yeah. So so that's all in all another great race. You can't knock the quality of the race. So what's what's the next race you'd like to? We're gonna go on the dirt mile. We're gonna dirt mile. The dirt mile. A mile on dirt. Oh, the dirt mile. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, there's your frenzy fire. Yeah, and Bravazo, I noticed her in there for the old Kentucky Derby trial. I mean, I, I remember from the show that me and Elizabeth Pepper did that she mentioned that Forenze Fire actually beat Mendelssohn in a race somewhere. So that obviously has got a chance. 
that has obviously got a chance. I noticed in that race that there is not one European runner in the race, which which indicates to me that these these American dirt horses are probably at quite a high standard. You know, not many not many European not many European trainers looking to get involved here. So it's one for you, really, Miss. I mean, what about the top one? That's the favourite, trained by your relative M. W. McCarthy. Yeah, Mike McCarthy. Michael McCarthy. Uh, Michael. I mean, that's obviously. He's a, that, oh, no, um, that's not the favourite anyway. I've just noticed there's one. California, there's another one that's lower than that. California trainer. Yeah, Catalina Cruiser as well from your for your mate Ooh, from the last yes. race, J. W. Sadler. Oh yes, he's undefeated now. One coming in. He never lost a race. He's raced four times, um, but no Grade One races his resume yet. Well, that don't matter, you know. Let all the others expose themselves and then come in at the end in the biggest race of the season. That's that's the way to do it. Right. He's well, yeah, he, in the market. He's, he's looking quite short in the market. I mean, yeah, that must be a horse that that the Americans know think's got a fair chance. Yeah, he does. He he he. He had a work on um, October 27th. He went five furlongs at 59.8. He finished six out of 61 horses that day. He's won a couple grade two races in California, um, all on dirt. So I think he's got a good shot. Yeah, the, and, the, and the price and the chances of the price reflect that as well now. I mean, yeah. I mean, dirt racing in America to me is a bit of a, especially at this sort of trip. I mean, I've been looking at the Kentucky Derby really, and all these are a bit short to me. I imagine, I imagine they'll they'll fly around, wouldn't they? Be like a sprint, wouldn't it? Just fly around. And, yeah, I mean, that's not to me. I'll be, I'll be, I'd have to be looking at maybe, I don't know, maybe friends they fire them because that I know that will stay. That stays further than that, doesn't it? Right. Oh, and Bravazo, number eight. He's a closer. You got to watch out for him. He comes like a freight train at the end. He's been beat more times than I've had hot dinners, Bravazo, and I love a hot dinner. He, he he's been beaten in all the races. If he wins tomorrow, it's a poor race. Yeah, twenty to one. I mean, he's a good honest horse for connections, isn't he? Yeah, you're right. He's been running in the Belmont, didn't he? Running the Belmont and the Preakness. Preakness. He be bad hat. Bad hat old find the Preakness. Yeah, he flew home in the fog, didn't he, and finished second. He just ran out of room. On that run, you'd have to give him every chance, wouldn't you? Yeah, you got to give him a shot. But in, but in your in your opinion, though, you you would say that they've all got Catalina Cruiser to beat, yeah? Yeah. Um, there's a number six horse seeking the soul. I kind of yeah, like I don't him. Know much about that one? I mean, so tell us about that one then. I like his uh, sire. Yeah, who's that? Pleasant okay. soul. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was. I've never heard of the jockey or the trainer. So that's nothing new to me in American racing. I mean, it must have a chance, mustn't it? Looking at the form of it. Again, then, you'd say a tough race to call. Um, his sire, number eight, or I mean, number six, seeking this little sire, ran second to the Kentucky Derby winner, Orb. Oh, Orb, Orb. yeah. I've noticed him siring a few, yeah. Ah, so really, you maybe once further then. But yeah, it's a fascinating race, but to me, not not for me, these races, the dirt races, really over a mile, dirt sprint and that. They're they're not for they're not for the European audience, are they? And I think and so, and I, th I think the entries reflect that really. It's a race for the Americans to get involved in, isn't it? So yeah, good luck with that. I hope your selections run well there, Catalina Cruiser and Seeking the Soul. Yeah, I've got no view on that race. I'm, I'm just going to leave the race well alone and wish yours good luck. And I hope they win for you. Well, they both can't win, can they? Right, so we, what we're going to look at the are we going to look at the filly and mare's turf now then, Monica? I think I don't think we've done that one yet, and then we've got the classic to do, and then that's it.
Hello everybody and welcome to Reprieve Media CIC's Double Handful. We're just having a quick look at the Breeders' Cup. It's the upcoming Breeders' Cup this week and in America and hopefully on the line now to discuss the final two races of the card on Saturday. We should have all the way from Illinois, Monica McCarthy. Are you there, Monica? Yes, sir. Fantastic. So, welcome back, Monica. I mean, we've touched on we've touched on the Breeders' Cup a little bit so far. I mean, what what horses are you looking forward to seeing run the most this weekend? Um, actually, the the horses I'm looking forward to seeing the most are Mendelssohn, Catholic Boy. The Roaring Lion, Arklo, West Coast, Mind Your Biscuits, Pavel, Lone Sailor, most of the ones, even Thunder Snow, uh, most of them I'm looking forward to seeing her in the classic itself. Okay, so we'll leave that we'll leave that race till last then. Uh but before that we'll just touch on the uh Phillies and Mares turf. I mean you look, I'm looking at this race now. I know you're not; it's not available to you at the moment. But you got to look at Chad Brown as well. You've got to be looking. He's got six in the race. Yes. From what I can establish. I might have miscounted. I don't know. Yeah, ideally, he's only got five. I mean, it's the Beverly D Stakes all over again. You've got Sister Charlie in there. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, one of the Beverly D Stakes. You've got Four Star Crook as well that ran in that race. Another good one. Yeah, you've got other horses in there as well, like Magic Wand, the Aid No Buying horse. That's that's an in and out horse. That's easily got the ability to win this race. It's, Magic it's, Wand. It's, 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 uh, Magic Wand. Yeah, it's ran well. It, it won. It won at Chester, and it won at Royal Ascot as well. So you can you can rule that horse out on a going day. I mean, you've got. But for me, um. You've got down the bottom. You've got other American runners, Santa Monica, your mate, Santa Monica. Even, <laughs> even, even though that's a, even though that's a British trained horse, a British bred horse, so it might not be an American horse. It's trained by Chad Brown. You've got yeah, a, I'm, no, I'm not familiar with that horse no, at all. Me neither at the moment. You've got uh, Athena. That's actually one of Group One mm-hmm. already in America at Belmont, another Cornwall horse, Athena. Yeah. But Ryan Moore yeah. prefers Magic One to that. I mean, that's that's a tip in itself, really, isn't it? You think? But Ryan Moore yes. normally gets on the best one. Um, Princess Yeza is an interesting one. Quite, a, I don't know, can't weigh the form for that up. I mean, it, it's a massive price tomorrow. It probably should be as well. It won the, it won that Group Two. I was, I was watched at Longchamp where I, I was quite strong on the Rothschild horse in that race, Palom. But Prin, oh, Princess Yeza just got just beat it on the line. <laughs> so, oh. so it's not really one of my favourite horses. But I'm not say, yeah. I know it's that's in there. What I do think could run well at a big price is uh, Faze, the French horse, the ex-French horse, T-H-A-I-S, it's spelled. I mean, I noticed that it's Chad Brown again. It was third in, it won, it third in the Beverly D Stakes behind uh, Sister Charlie and that again. So if that's, the, if that's the four best form line in America probably for this race, even though that race is in Canada, I know, I know that at Woodbine. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, Arlington. Not the Woodbine, is it? That's the E.P. Taylor. I always used to get them two races muddled up. You've got a phase, I think. I don't know, 20 to 1. It could run up these silly prices on the morning line. You can't really go on them. But if we were going on them, that would be a big price. I do think that. But to me, Wild Illusion is the one they have to beat in there. The Godolphin filly. I mean, it's been sent over there, I think. They like that horse. It's very highly tried. Group, group 1 winner as a juvenile. Placed in both the Guineas and the Oaks. And then it won the it won the Nassau, and then it won the uh, it won in France again last time out as well. So right, the Prix de l'Opera, I think it's called. And uh, that's that's a good horse. I think I think that I think they'll be disappointed tomorrow if that don't run well. Yes. Yeah. So I think apart from that, it's a tough race. You've got a German bred horse in there called called a Raven Beauty. That's mm-hmm. another Chad Brown horse. He'll train. I'm sure that's another good good filly from somewhere. But all in all, I don't think it's the strongest race, really, for Breeders' Cup, Monica, to be honest. No, I don't either. But I do like Magic Wand, and I like Sister Charlie. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I wouldn't put I, I mm-hmm. went off there. Sister Charlie had superb form in France. It was second in the French Oaks. So, mm-hmm. uh, so it, it's no it's no surprise to me that it's gone out there and proved itself to be a good horse. Uh, it's a very good horse. It wins it wins no end of races out in America now. It's American trained. It's one of the best ones out there, isn't it? What's the morning line odds on Magic One? Magic One is five to one, according to that. Okay. S- sister Charlie, that's, three, that's to, a... three to one, sister. But okay. For, to me, I, I think Azira in there. I, I will say it now. First time lay six as well, so they're slipping it a quick Mickey Finn to get the mm-hmm. to get the best run out of it. I think mm-hmm. that's a progressive filly. I think. I, I do think. I, I think it's got a great chance. Dermot Weld. And uh, Frankie Tatori riding for the Aga Khan. You don't get many Aga Khan runners in America. You just don't. You know, this is a right. this is a very very important individual in, in all walks of life. You know what I mean, he's a very important, very well connected man. So I oh, think, yeah. So, so I think if he's if he's willing to send horse all the way out there for that, then then it must have it must have it must deserve a very close look. I think. So that's what we did, really. Um, it's never been out of the first three in its life. You know, it's, it's run 11 times. And it's been placed in the first three in every one of its runs. So that's solid horse, isn't it? As you, as you, would, as you would expect from an Aga Khan horse as well. It's very well bred. The form of it is quite good as well. You mentioned you mentioned how impressed you were when Enable won the arc last, last time. I mean, you must have noticed the second in that race as well. Sea of Class coming from, coming from last to last to second. And James Doyle in the arc. I mean, yes. third, that is, this Azira was third behind that this season. Yes. So it's got solid form already. Uh, last time out, it, it beat it beat a horse called Who's Steph, which it won, that actually won two Irish Guinness trials. Two Irish Thousand Guinness trials. And, and, and Azira beat that in the Blanford. So that's a good run, a good solid run. It's well bred as well, you know. You, you, you messaged me earlier privately about... Yes. A horse called Estimate. Yeah. The Gold Cup winner. Well, the dam, the dam of the the dam of this horse is actually a half sister to Estimate. Yeah. Enough. The funny old horse racing world, isn't it? Yeah. So, so, so the dam of the dam of Azira is a half sister to Estimate, and, and and also Enzeli as well, a horse I've never heard of. It's won the Ascot Gold Cup as well. So it's got two Ascot Gold Cup winners in its pedigree as well, over two and a half miles. Mm-hmm. So this horse is going to stay all day long, isn't it? You know, plus, plus, plus the Royal Oak winner as well, Ebedila. The horse I do remember because it's the dam of of Ebedia, and that won the Supreme Novices Hurdle at Cheltenham Festival a few years back. So it's good, sol- good solid Aga Khan family here. But, but you, you think it stay all day long? I think it's never been out the first three in its life. I can't see why that can't run a good race tomorrow. To be honest, so I'm going to probably put that up as a little tentative selection. But we we must emphasise, we must emphasise that these these races are very difficult to predict, aren't yes, they? Yes, very very difficult to predict. I mean, what would you if you were looking really? You you would probably suggest that people really should just watch them, wouldn't you? Really, if they're not really, better than guessing, isn't it? Right. But you but so in your in your opinion on that race, you would probably just side towards what did you say you fancied in that race? Uh, Magic Wand and Sister Charlie. I mean, yeah, why not? Good luck with them. I hope they run well for you as well tomorrow. Right, Monica, we're on the home stretch now in the final furlong, so to speak, with arguably the best race of the season so far anywhere in the world, probably, over this trip of, of 10 furlongs, apart from none, really. It's a top quality race with a lot of a lot of the best horses there. We're, we're of course, talking about the Breeders' Cup Classic. And... The, a, a quick clue, really, to the strength and depth of this race. If you've got a horse as good as Gunavera, who's a solid horse in his own right, and he's, he's one of the outsiders for this race, last one of, one of the best three-year-olds last season. So this is a quality race, isn't it? I mean, what do you? What's your views on it? It's you know, it's a it's a quality race. It's it's the field is deep. Um. I'm looking at Bafford's horse, uh, trainer Bob Bafford. You know he's got he's got two right in a row, McKenzie and West Coast, and then yeah, I remember that West Coast. It got stuffed in Dubai, yes. didn't it? it? Got stuffed in the World and then Cup, you didn't got it? yes, he definitely did. And then uh, 
You said you touched on McKinsey as well. Tell us a little bit about McKinsey because that's a horse maybe yeah. that has gone under the radar. Uh, early, in the season, early in the season, he he was in a race, uh, another California co- California Coast horse with uh, trainer Bob Baffert, mm-hmm. and McKinsey um, was in a race with uh, another Derby contender Bolt Dioro, and ended up being a match race between the two and McKenzie had some pulled like some ligaments. And so he was off the Derby trail. McKenzie was off the Derby trail and bolt went on, you know, to the Derby and he's had a lot of time off. They had to take a lot of time off for McKenzie. And now he's, you know, in the, in the latter part of the season, he's, he's up and running again. So not quite sure how McKenzie's going to rate with all this talent in here, you know, that's, West Coast is another Bob Baffert horse that uh, is an older horse. Um, he's he's sitting at five to one, where McKenzie's six to one. Um, we we've got Mendelssohn. Um, Mendelssohn, he's got a good post for once. You know, uh, his his Derby post was the worst post that you can draw. For the Kentucky Derby, you come out of that in the Kentucky Derby. There's 20 posts there, and right where Middleson was is the the last of the one section of the the gate, and then there's an extension on on further for the rest of the horses, and that is the worst place to be. And as we all saw on the Kentucky Derby, where Poor Mendelssohn, he was just bounced around like a – he was in a pinball game. It was horrible. And uh, so for to the, uh, for Saturday's race, Mendelssohn's got a good spot. He's post nine. So I'm I'm liking that so much better. Um, you've got uh, Mind Your Biscuits. Yeah, that's not going to stay, is it? Is that a non-stayer? Yeah. It won, it's won the Dubai Sprint. I remember it clearly. So why is it? Why have they? Why have they doubled it up in trip? Then it's running twice as far. <laughs> they must. They must fancy the horse. I remember that race in Dubai. That flew home that day. That must have a good chance as well. Do you like the chances of Mind Your Biscuits as yeah. well, Monica? Yes, definitely. I like the chances for Mind Your Biscuits, but I also like um, Catholic Boy. He's got an. Well, to me, cap- to me, that is an excellent chance. I mean, I'm glad we've touched on that horse because you're gonna, you're now gonna educate me, as well as the masses. I imagine what on earth is a Ridgling? Yeah, Catholic boy is a three-year-old Ridgling. He's not a no, colt or a gelding. No, no. He is a Ridgling. What is a Ridgling? Yes. You know? Um, that means that one of his undergarments did not. One of his um, testicles did not fall into place. Oh, he's a eunuch. Yes, he's a eunuch. Yeah, exactly. One of his his testicles didn't come where it should be. And so he's a Ridgling. I don't know what they do with Ridglings in England because I've never seen them classified in England. They must exist. They just must not classify them. But in America, there, there is a few, I've noticed. And I've always thought, what on earth is a Ridgling? I never bothered asking because oh, I just thought I'd find out and let someone educate us, and that's what it is, is it? Okay, uh, a horse with one testicle, yeah? Yeah, one, one working, one not. I think he's one to watch. Um, he's, he's, um, he's, he's proven himself on dirt and turf. Yeah, that's what, that's what I noticed. He must be a good horse to do that out there, because there's a lot of good horses in America, and he has one on both dirt and turf, so I agree with you. He must have an excellent chance, yes. doesn't he? Yes, um, the odd. What about the what about Yoshida? Is an interesting one. That's a turf horse, isn't it? Trying yeah, the he's trying the dirt. You know, sometimes they prefer the dirt. You know, you don't know until you try him. And this would be kind of a risky spot to try him. But his trainer Bill Mott is an excellent trainer. So if if Bill Mott, he yeah, must be, Bill yeah, because he trains all the Judmont horses in America, and they, they wouldn't send they wouldn't send horses to any Tom Dick or Harry. This WI Mott must be able to train horses. Yeah, I'm aware of that. So, he ran well at Royal Ascot, comparatively, in the Queen Anne. I don't know, man. He must have a chance, I think. 
You know, if, if, if he takes to the surface, obviously, you, you, you are, you are, you're expecting a little bit of trust there that, that he will go on the surface, right. aren't you? You know, the only thing I can, I can recall, you know, just in the recent years that um, had an issue with the dirt and it was, it was, the track was sloppy with some thunder snow in the derby. Um, said no, you know, he got a lot of, um, dirt in his face and that was enough. He just kind of shut down and that was it. But I think in general, most horses are okay, you know, but then a good horse. I mean, thunder snow to me, thunder snow to me, thunder snow to me has an excellent oh, chance yeah. because he's Dubai world cup winner, isn't he? Yeah, so he, he to me will be there to pick yeah. up pieces if anything goes wrong. With any as of the long others. as he can stay He's out of traffic, yardstick, front, a world class, absolute world class jockey on him who, who gets on well with the horse. So, Sumion always rides the horse, they know now that Sumion is a genius. There's never been in any doubt with me, I've known he's a genius for a long time. But the more, more French racing I've watched this year, I'm in no doubt that that man is the best jockey in the world, no, without any shadow of a doubt. So he's miles in front of everybody, not even close. So he, he, that's just my view. So he, he, if I imagine he'll just try and lead Sumi on, set his own pace like he did in the Dubai World Cup. You know, it'd be, it's a fascinating race, definitely a fascinating race. You've got obviously the the best three year old oh, yeah. in Europe as well, Roaring Lion. Oh yeah. I mean, you look at his form in Europe, and he is. He's, he's, he's there for all to see. G1, you know, G1, G1, season, G1 grade ones. He's been you know what? It. Yeah, he's won, yeah. won the Judmont International. He won the Eclipse. Very good races, Monica. Very good races to win. And then he, he dropped back in trip last time over to win over a mile. You know, on the soft ground, which he hated. You can tell he hated it when you watched it. But it, it, well, his he, class got him through. He won... You know, he's been on the go a long time. That would be my only worry with him. He actually ran in one of the Guinness trials, the Craven, where he was actually behind Massar, and that race was in April. So the horses, the horses had a good, long, long, tough campaign. But if you look, if you look with Qatar Racing, they're doing the same with Roaring Lion as they are with the other one I said earlier, Lightning Spear. You know, they're both retiring. They're both retiring. It's going to be the last race. You know. Oh, I wish them luck. You know, it's the owners I like. They've done the. I've won. I've followed them for a while, and they have good horses. You know, they, I wish them luck with them both, Lightning Spear and this tomorrow. I hope they. I hope they go there well. They've got a good jockey on them, O'Sheen Murphy. I don't think. I don't. I don't think no, the Americans don't have probably seen so. much of him as a jockey. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he's a superb the jockey. I mean, he's John Gosden. I mean, he he speaks for himself. I mean, if you don't get you don't get many better trainers than him, do you? The, the, yeah. That's worldwide. I think you can safely say that. That he is one of the most adept men in the world when it comes to horses. Even Andre Favre probably. You know, they're probably the two that you, you would you would have to look at. Another horse that I've been looking at, which I think is the potential fly in the ointment, is is Accelerate. I mean I don't know what you think of that one. Your mate again, J. W. Sadler, the Californian, he's obviously He's obviously targeted this meeting, isn't he, with a few good horses. He could have a good day tomorrow, mm -hmm. couldn't he? Yeah, he's he's an older horse, um, but he's a good one. Y you got to watch him too. He's he's they got him bet down five to one for the morning line. Um, he's an excellent horse. Even the collected is a good horse. Um, Toast to New York. Is a, collected is a non-runner. I think you'll find he's 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 only going to run if all the others run. Toast of New York is actually running tomorrow in the mar on Friday in the Marathon States. Okay, okay. So yeah, they, they, they switch up racing horse. I mean, I don't know what they can, what can, anything could happen with that. Wouldn't surprise me if it won on Friday, but it's a race we didn't look at because it's a poor race. But I noticed that was in there as well. But right, but to, okay. to me, I don't know, man. You touched on Mendelssohn earlier. I mean, pff, I don't know about that horse. The horse to me is, if, I don't know. It polarises me all the time because it won on the turf, it won the Breeders' Cup turf, and then they ended up running it on the dirt. I mean, it, like you, you've already mentioned that what a poor run it had in the Kentucky Derby. Well, you gotta, no fault of its own, you really. just forget about that race. That's a he can't, he can't do that. No, because that was the most important race of his. It was the most important race of his season. You can't just forget about the most important race of his season. That was the race he was targeted at. 
And for him, for him to run, for him to run like that, I thought, oh, it would have been a bad day for them. They'd have been disappointed with that. Did you see how much but, blood was on him at the end of the race? Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. Terrible conditions for all of them. Yeah, and he, he was one who he was one who was not favoured by them at all. That's that's the same for all of them, isn't it? But they yeah. they kept him out there, and he's been beaten two, three times yeah. since then. It's not like it's not like his form. It's not like the Kentucky Derby was a one-off where he got beat. He's been beaten every time since then as well. So I can't I can't have him, unfortunately. Not much as much as I do, much as I do hope the horse runs well, I hope all horses run well, really. Uh, especially one as well bred as that. You know, it's his full brother to into mischief for sire in America already, and and the damn be, the mare beholder, a superb race mare in America, isn't it? So, so you, you must have to, you have to say really that in comparison to them two, old Mendelssohn's been been a bit disappointed. Yes, a little bit, you know? but I'm crossing my fingers yeah. for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you. I know you're a bit biased when it comes to Coolmore. You've, you've you've made that perfectly clear over, over the times. Yeah, which is fine. Which is fine. You know, we've all got our bias. We've all got our favourite trainers and owners and horses. That's what what's so brilliant about this sport. You know, there's some trainers who, if they've got a good horse, I'll never admit they've got a good horse. I just won't look at the race. Do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and I'm sure you've got trainers you'd rather see not win as well. Yeah, that's, that's what it's, that's how that's how it is. But to me, this race is is, a, is an impossible race to predict with any certainty, just due to the yeah. quality of the race. There, it's just so deep, got, and in there, so you've got talent. three-year-olds in there. You've got good three-year-olds in there, like Roaring Lion. You've got good quality McKinsey as well. You have to say he's a good American three-year-old, highly touted horse. You've got you've got good solid older horses like West Coast, Yoshida, Mind Your Biscuits. Catholic boy, Catholic boy to me is a superb prospect of horse, you know, because he's he's the only he's the only probably I would say, apart from McKinsey, the only unexposed three year old left in America. They're, they've all they've all been on the go all season, you know. It's a fascinating race to me. I don't know if I had to say to you now, Monica McCarthy, you on double handful, so we don't sit on the fence here. Mm -hmm. What wins it? What wins the Breeders' Cup Classic? God. What would you say? Am I going to have to close my eyes and 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 drop my pen on something? I'm going to go with Catholic Boy. Catholic Boy, fair, fair shout. Me, I'll be well obviously having to go in this way, so I'm going to go for McKinsey. You're going to go for McKinsey? No, not McKinsey Roaring Lion? For me, I, I think, well, don't get me wrong, I'd love to see Roaring Lion win it. Definitely I would. I'd be delighted. Oh, but, but to me... I know, I know from listening to other people in America and listening to other people in uh, forums that there's a lot of confidence behind this horse. There has been ever since it ran. It's a good horse. So you, you've got to take, you've got to take the reputation of people on trust. And if, if Mr. Baffert and Mr. Smith are riding this horse tomorrow, then they're, they're, they're then they are going there thinking it has an excellent chance. So, so to me, I will go with McKinsey. I think, but I, I could be to I could be totally wrong. And, and uh, yeah, me too. More than likely, we'll both be wrong, <laughs> eh? But if, if we get the forecast, <laughs> if we get the forecast between us, we are available for to work on other stations starting from next week, aren't we? Yes. So all in all, a great weekend's racing ahead, Monica. Would you say? Yes. Give us a very excited. So, irrespective of this race, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna sum up now, it, because. We could talk all day about horse racing, I'm sure, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure people could listen to it all day. Unfortunately, it's their loss, not ours. But what do you think, honestly? Do you, if you could name one horse, if, if I said to you again, Monica McCarthy, you're here on Double Am Four, you've got earn your, earn your stripes. One one horse at any Breeders' Cup race you like that will win. What do you think it would be? I'm gonna go with Arklow in the. The turf. And that, is a, that, is, that is a massive price as well, isn't it? What have you, what have yes, you seen, like what have you seen in that horse then that you think's good? What, what do you what do you think? Why? Why is that? He's he's consistent, and then every once in a while he every other race he 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 just puts the pedal to the metal and does that extra kick and goes across the winner line. You know he's first. You've got me interested in the horse now. I'm actually look, I'm actually looking at the horse now. He's out of Arch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Arch by Chris S. By Chris horse. S. He's run 16 times though. He's not really he's not really improving, is he? No. Like you say, he's been 
Yeah, he's not one for a while either. He'll be in the money. If he's not, if he doesn't win, he'll be in the money. You can play him for. He likes the track, doesn't he? Put it down. You have to say you have to say that some of his best form when he was when he when he when he was fourth in the old Forester Turf Classic, and, and he won and the American Turf Stakes as well. But he likes the track. He's got a good form at the track. You have to say that. But this year, you were know, on about that other track earlier, Kentucky Downs as well, weren't you? He's, he won there as well earlier in the year. In Group 3. I don't know. Yeah, I, th- I think he's got a bit to find, but you, you know more about these American races than me, so at least you've not tipped an odds, unless you're not, at least you're not giving odds on shot anyway. If, if you're... If you are if you are right, you're going to be spectacularly right, aren't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I can see why you fancy it now because it's your mate, it's Donegal Racing. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, I've noticed that now. Yeah, Florent Giroux is the jockey. Yeah, he's he's a good jockey. Giroux, he's 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 good. He he was the gun runner jockey. He he was the jockey for gun runner. Yeah. But what yeah, about the trainer definitely. then, Brad H. Cox? I know nothing about that man. Oh, he's 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 really been on fire this year. Does he train all the Donegal racing? You know? Does he train all the Donegal racing horses, or are they spread about across the country? He he he, he he's trains a few of them, but no, Donegal kind of has their hands in, you know, B- Bafford and and um, Christant Clement, and uh, Donegal doesn't stay with just one trainer. Bill Mott. Uh, Patty Prado was a good horse, um, and he just recently died in Turkey. And then Keen Ice, you know, he was not – he didn't win all the time, but he, he beat uh, American Pharaoh because Frost had wore him down. But <laughs> that's his big claim to fame. His you know, claim to fame, he, he – you know, American Pharaoh was undefeated, and then you go to Saratoga where they run the Traverse Stakes, and they call that the – the graveyard of champions. Well, that happened to Pharaoh because Keen Ice beat him. And um, there's been a few of their horses that um, Baham Murrah, they they don't have anymore. They they got her off the payroll. She's a filly. Now she's she's stabled out in California and, and winning more races. So uh, I don't know, you know, what the connections, you know, why they, how they figure who's who they're gonna, you know, sell in a claiming race or whatnot, but they just good solid horses. Let's just say that. Yeah, so you think you think tomorrow that this this uh, art club will, will run a, a good solid race, yeah? Yeah, I think he'll run a good solid race. Like I said, he may not win, but I think he's gonna be in the money. And at that sort of price, that he's that he's a favourite at the moment. You can't you can't really complain. No, he's can like the one. Yeah, it, he's like 30 to 1 right now. Well, that so. seems to be the standard price for an outsider on this page, doesn't it? <laughs> they, I think if they're not sure, they just put 30 to 1, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, 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 that's, what, that's the impression I've got from, that, from, their, from their prices anyway. Well, yeah, hope, hopefully it'll run well for you. So we'll see. We sure will. It all, it all come out, you know, in the wash. Yeah, we sure will. So we're going to... We're going to wind down. We're going to wind this broadcast down now. Monica, can I just take this opportunity to say thank you very much for taking the time to join Double Handful today. It's been an absolute pleasure listening to your views and hopefully we will have you on again in the near future if you're, if you're open to that suggestion. Yeah, I've, I've been thrilled to do this today and I really enjoyed it. And... Um, as always, I always like to talk about horse racing, and uh, I think we're going to see some good races this weekend. Yeah, well, I agree. I agree with you. I'm looking forward to watching it. I'll just remember that. Just keep an eye on my suggestions. Really, not really suggestions, because like Monica said, she's she's just backing horses that she thinks that she would like to see run well. It's hard, impossible, really, to say these horses will win. It's the Breeders' Cup, man. It's what do you expect us to do? Anyone who, who anyone who has one placed in the Breeders' Cup has done well in any race. So I'm going to say keep an eye on them Qatar racing horses. No, nothing to lose. Roaring Lion and Lightning Spear. Keep an eye on them. And, and, the, and the Aga Khan horse, Azira. 
Oh, and expert eye as well. But all in all, it should really be a fascinating weekend's racing over there. Monica, thank you very much again and all the best. Good luck and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. I hope you have a great day too. Thank you and good luck. Thank you.